Good afternoon. Welcome to the Government Military and Veterans Affairs Committee. I'm Senator Tom Brewer, representing the 43rd Legislative District of Western Nebraska. I serve as the chair of this committee. The committee will take up the bills in the order posted on the schedule. Your hearing, our hearing today is your public part of the legislative process. This is your opportunity to express your position on proposed legislation before us. Committee members may come and go during the hearing. This is just part of the process. They have bills to introduce in other committees. We talked just before we started. Uh, Senator Conrad has like three in a row, so she probably won't be with us here today. And Holleran, Senator Holleran has, uh, he's in revenue. Okay, uh, I ask that you abide by the following procedures to better facilitate today's meeting. Um, please silence or turn off your phones or electronic devices. Uh, when it's time to present, please move forward. Uh, we normally just reserve the front row for those that are presenting on a given bill. Uh, we will uh, reserve the close for the center making the initial statements. The procedures as far as order will go proponents, opponents, and then those in testifying in the neutral. And closing remarks from the opening center. If you're planning to testify today, please fill out one of the green sheets that's on the back table. Again, we ask that you print, fill it out completely so that we can use it for the official record and we have the information we need. Uh, when you come up to testify, give the green sheet to either the committee clerk or one of the pages. If you do not wish to testify today but want to record your name, being present for the hearing and indicate your position. There are white sheets that you can fill out at the back of the room. And this will also go into the official hearing record. If you uh, have handouts, we'd ask that you give us 10 copies. If you don't have 10 copies, we can ask pages to help us get more copies. Uh, when you come up to testify, we'd ask that you speak into the microphone and say and spell your name so that it goes into the record accurately. Also, let's get some idea of our head count today. Uh, how many are here to testify on either the first or second bill? All right, we're going to go five minutes. So you'll have four minutes, green light, one minute of amber, and then the red light. No displays of support or opposition to bills, vocal or otherwise, will be allowed from the audience. This is a public hearing. Uh, committee members that are with us here today will introduce themselves, starting on my right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jane Raybould, Legislative District 28, which is the heart of Lincoln. Good afternoon, Rita Sanders, representing District 45, which is the Bellevue Offit community. John Lowe, District 37, Kearney, Gibbon, and Shelton. Senator Sanders is the Vice Chair. Dick Clark is the Committee Legal Counsel. Julie Conham is the Committee Clerk. And today with us, I took my page note. We got Logan and Trent. All right, Logan, pull up your hand. Trent, pull up your hand. All right, there you go. All right, with that, we will welcome Senator McDonald and LB624. Take it away. Thank you, Chairperson Brewer and members of the committee. My name is Mike McDonald, M I K E C. M I K E M C D O N N E L L. I represent Legislative District 5, South Omaha. Today I bring you AM 688, which is a white copy amendment to replace LB 624. When LB 624 was created, its original intent was to return the Tourism Commission back to the Department of Economic Development in order to ensure that Nebraska's messaging and promotional efforts are better aligned, though I must admit the original intent was not for everyone. That was my joke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody Thank you. Oh, Thank you, Tim and Alicia. Credit. He'll be there all day. All right. <laughs> Don't forget to tip your waitress. <clears throat> However, after meeting with some passionate advocates for the Nebraska tourism industry, we believe we have come up with a compromise that fits the main intent, which is to better align our messaging throughout the state's promotional efforts. And that is what AM 688 reflects. AM 688, which replaces the original bill, simply adds the Director of Economic Development and a representative from the State Chamber to the Tourism Commission. This ensures that the three main organizations responsible for promoting the state of Nebraska are better aligned on messaging and future campaigns. But this also will help create stronger advocates for Nebraska's third largest industry within DD and the State Chamber. 
The tourism and hospitality industry accounts for over 3.5 billion in annual tourism sales in our state and it employs over 40,000 individuals. With greater involvement of DD and the state chamber, I believe that there, there, there may be more consensus going forward on investing in this industry and perhaps even an increase in available resources to promote our state. The bill helps unify and amplify the great work already being done by various agencies, nonprofits and communities across the state. It also provides us a chance to showcase our greatest assets in tourism and economic development that we can use to promote our state. I believe this legislation will allow us to do just that and I urge you to support it. Um, yeah, this really did come from compromise and a number of discussions and I, I appreciate the people that are gonna testify today. And of course the goal is to make sure that we're all on the same page with our messaging and we think this bill could help that uh, with our people working together and communicating better. All right, thank you for that opening. Uh, to kind of make sure everybody has an understanding of how it's kind of transitioned to where it's at now. So originally tourism used to fall under DED? Yes. And what year did that change? Ballpark? I, I believe approximately 16 years ago. 2012? 2012 just okay. echoed into my ear. For All right, some perfect. Uh, <laughs> and so at that point, they became a standalone agency. And this just has it so that they're working close together, so they're all kind of singing on the same sheet of music. Working together, yes, and serving on the tourism board together. All right. Let's see if we got any questions for you. Questions for Senator Rizal? Yes, Senator Rizal. Thank you for being here. So they haven't been coordinating and communicating with each other before? Well, I don't think as effectively and efficiently as they could going forward. I think this would help with that. Okay. I, I just thought they were doing a, a pretty good job being independent and not necessarily being under anybody's wing. So is there, is there some area that you feel like they weren't doing a good job on or? Well, getting, yeah, getting input from individuals and, and we're more, some people say, well, if we're doing okay, that's okay. I don't think so. I think if you're, you're doing okay, that's just what you're doing is okay. We want to do better. And I think there's ways to improve that through communication because meeting with different people, you could, you could tell when you're uh, having those discussions that there, there wasn't a lot of organized communication um, in the past and, and serving on the, the board together. I think that, helps like we all know this we all get busy and there's things that happen well it forces people to come together have discussions and, and work together okay thank you all right any other questions you know stick around for close yes thank you all right thank you for that all right we're going to start with proponents to lb 624. welcome to the government committee thank you chairman Good afternoon, Chairman Brewer, members of the Government, Military, and Veteran Affairs Committee. I'm Rich Otto, R-I-C-H-O-T-T-O, testifying in support of LB 624 as amended by AM 688 on behalf of the Nebraska Hospitality Association. Uh, for those of you that may not be familiar with the Nebraska Hospitality Association, it was formed two years ago when the Nebraska Restaurant Association and the Nebraska Hotel Motel Association merged. Hotel members collect and remit the lodging tax that funds 90% of the Nebraska Tourism Commission's budget, and our goal is to see those dollars spent as efficiently as possible. We are appreciative to Senator McDonald for having that same goal. AM 688 provi provides for greater collaboration between the Nebraska Tourism Commission, the Nebraska Department of Economic Development, and the business community. Nebraska hotels have had great momentum post-COVID, and this will keep us moving in the right direction. We encourage you to support AM688, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. All right. Thanks, Rich. Let's see if we got any questions. Questions for Rich. Yes, I have I have the same question, so thank you for testifying. Is there something that the previous years that they weren't collaborating and cooperating and working with each other in sync on, on tourism, and, and how is this going to be different? Well, the big thing, I think they are working together and have had communication. Probably the biggest thing is we've seen with dollars that the Tourism Commission has their campaign and then DED did their own, got some money to do their own. And I think one of the things is could 
we continue to, whenever we're doing campaigns for Nebraska to bring people back or to promote tourism, maybe there's some additional synergy that could have happened between the two campaigns. And so will the funding stay the same for the Department of Tourism? That will not be that will not change. Compromised or it's assumed in the, the no. budget on DE. Now, no, none of that will change. We are, this is a separate bill on appropriations, but we are optimistic that appropriations will lift the lid for tourism. Uh, currently, we're, it's been so good post-COVID with uh, remittance from the lodging tax that we are actually bringing in more than the Tourism Commission is currently allowed to spend. So we are optimistic and our members support uh, appropriations lifting, raising their spending cap so that they can uh, spend at the dollars, all of the dollars that the lodging tax brings in. Okay, but is that you're but it's that, all separate nothing so DED, separate. yep they will be completely separate still just uh a little more collaboration okay thank you all right additional questions on the 624 all right thank you for your testimony thank you all right still looking at proponents to ld 624. welcome to the government committee thank you mr chairman uh, members of the Government Military and Veterans Affairs Committee. My name is Brent Smoyer, B-R-E-N-T-S-M-O-Y-E-R. -E I'm a registered lobbyist for the Nebraska Travel Association. Um, I don't know that there's much I can add to uh, uh, Mr. Otto's uh, testimony. Um, Travel Association endorses uh, AM688. We appreciate Senator McDonald being so willing to work to come to a, uh, I think, a very well thought out and well reasoned compromise to make sure that we are working in tandem. I think we can all agree that various parts of state government uh, across the board could stand to have a little better communication. And so this will help that along. Uh, with me, I did include a letter from the Nebraska Tourism Commission. Uh, they will be coming in as neutral. Um, usually you see that happen for most state agencies uh, when it comes to this kind of thing. Uh, but I do believe they are also very happy and willing to work with Senator McDonald uh, into the future on this issue. Uh, with that, happy to take any questions. Well, short to the point, I like it. Uh, Senator Rowell. Thank you, Mr. Sawyer, for coming. So will the Nebraska Travel Association still have a seat in the collective table or the bargaining or the meetings that they have? Yes, uh, the Tourism Commission is made up of actually currently uh, 11 positions, and I know I will probably misspeak at some point here, so forgive me, but uh, 11 positions by geographical area. A uh, number of those seats do overlap with members that are in the Travel Association. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of collaboration, a lot of work. Uh, you should see some of the calls we have sometime. There's, it's, it's like the Brady Bunch on steroids. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, additional questions. All right, thank you for your testimony. Thank you. We're still looking for proponents to LB 624. All right, any opponents? Anybody here in the neutral? All right, Sir McDonald. Oh, and I got to read. No, I don't have to read any letters because there's no letters. You have no <coughs> opposition letters, and you have no one speaking in opposition. Thank you. Just to uh, clarify, uh, uh, Senator Rabel, when you see the with the amendment, there'll be no fiscal impact. So the, 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 you'll see that fiscal note coming um, later on. Uh, again, God bless you. Again, it's it's about communication. It's about getting people to work together. It's about improving on what we've done in the past and not and not stalemating on our successes, but also looking at some of the mistakes that have been made in the past. And I think a lot of those mistakes can be changed based on just communication and, and people working together. The, the idea of, of people that are already involved uh, sitting on the board that won't change those be added to with the uh, the person from the Department of Economic Development and the Nebraska Chamber. All right, let's see if we have any questions in closing. Questions for Senator McDonald? Okay. All right, thank, thank you for you. your testimony. That will close our hearing on LB 624, and we may have a bit of a delay for LB 474. Okay, I have a question for you, Dick. So, um, LB 535 was made the committee priority, right? One of two. Okay. Did we vote on that? No. Oh, so we don't have to vote on that? No. It's always the chairs? Well, every committee operates by the rules that are established for that committee. Senators, a set of model rules. Okay. But essentially, most committees, the rules 
what the chairman established has been the practice that the chairman board has always had has been that that is something that's not done by the chair. So yeah, why don't usually one of those is a, a committee elections omnibus bill. You powered up? <laughs> All right, uh, everybody, welcome back. Uh, we are now going to hear the opening from Senator Wayne on LB 474. Senator Wayne, take it away. Thank you, Chairman Brewer and members of the Government, Military, and Veterans Affairs Committee. My name is Justin Wayne, J U S T I N W A Y N E, and I represent Legislative District 13, which is North Omaha and Northeast Douglas County. Today, I am here to introduce a very simple bill, LB-474, which I had labeled as Preserve the Third. It's part two of, a, of the bill. The first bill was just heard in uh, appropriations about rail spur and increasing the economic development here. Today, this part of the Preserve the Third is to preserve the cultural and uh, historical uh, significance of the third district. This is an important bill because it focused on some really great intersections of rural history, Nebraska history, African-American history, and native community history, and overall our country history. I believe this bill is one of the most significant and far-reaching cultural preservation bills this session. Time is also of the essence because one of these sites are at risk of being lost altogether, and another one is at risk of being left behind and largely forgotten about by this body. All of these sites affected in this bill are worthy of our attention and are worthy of the effort and resources necessary to preserve and improve them. First, I'm going to talk about the Mayhew cabin. The Mayhew cabin is something that uh, ever since I started going down uh, to Nebraska City for our legislative councils, I was always go by there, uh, visited the first couple of times. But last year, I noticed when we went down there, it was closed. And so I started doing some research on it. And the reason why this ca this cabin is so important is our, uh, abolitionist James Keg, I think it's to maybe spelling it wrong. I'm mean, saying it wrong, but it's K E G I. For several years, operated this cabin a part of the Underground Railroad. He was one of John Brown's top lieutenant fighting against slave owners in Kansas. He ultimately gave his life for this cause during a raid on Harbor's farm in 1859. While this was the home and shelter for many runaway slaves escaping uh, slavery, this house was also one of the ways they snuck to farther themselves, to better themselves in the north. This, south has, this site has been a tourist attraction in Nebraska City since the 1930s. And at times there was questions about the historical accuracy, but in 2013, there was enough documentation and proof of 2003 that it officially became part of the National Underground Railroad Network to Freedom. A program listed under the National Park Service working to identify associated sites with the Underground Railroad. And this moment from here, it is, it's only 700 sites across the country and we have one right here in Nebraska. In 2010, it was added to the National Registry of Historic Places. This is a very vulnerable spot that we need to fix because in 2013, a disaster struck. Heavy rain and flooding severely damaged the site. Mold and mildew and foundation issues follow. It has been a shame, uh, in a shameful state of disrepair and neglect since. There has been a lot of blaming going on if you read the newspaper articles and lawsuits going back and forth. But for me as a state and as a state legislator, we have the ability to fix this problem. I have been waiting for history. Uh, I've been waiting for history Nebraska to act. They haven't. I've been waiting for Nebraska City to act. They haven't. I've been waiting for the county to act. They haven't. So today I leave it up to this committee to act. 
bringing this back into the history of Nebraska or into the game in parks will ensure that the Mayhew cabin can live for another hundred years. Now turning to Fort Robinson. That was my first year of going out there during the turkey hunt with Senator Brewer. And he said, you should go west and go visit Fort Robinson. And I did. And during that time, I learned about the Sioux Wars that were fought from 1876 to 1890 and the historical significance of that area. The fort was originally built in 1874. It was initially small, a third rate outpost with no right minded person would live in that area at that time, but they still had people there. Eventually, permanent structures were built and infrastructure would arrive and it would be become one of the busiest bustling fortresses in America. And it was the key to Western expansion. The relationship between the United States Cavalry and this fort cannot be emphasized enough. Soldiers from around the country were sent there, were trained, lived there. Their horses and mules for the U.S. Cavalry were trained there. It is one of the, the best horses in the cavalry were bought there and bred there to help support local livestock uh, in the area. And we still see those beautiful horses out there till this day. The cavalry uh, facility became the largest of its kind in the world, not just in Nebraska or in the United States. And its local communities uh, paid great respect to it, especially during the First World War. In 1885, the 9th Cavalry was stationed at Fort Robinson, and the fort underwent significant expansion and investment by the federal government. For those who don't know, the 9th Cavalry was one of the nation's few segregated all-Black regiments. The famed units became collectively known as the Buffalo Soldiers. And the reference came from actually natives who saw their short hair, curly hair, traditionally African-American hair, and compared it to the Buffalo. And that's how the nickname was coined. Adoption, uh, that actually became the common in which I was referred to as, I always knew them as the Buffalo Soldiers. I never knew the actual cavalry name until I started researching for this bill. The 9th Cavalry was one of the most famous regiments in the American history, fighting bravely in various plan, plan wars and fighting alongside of Theodore Roosevelt at the Battle of St. Juan Hill during the Spanish-American War. After the distinguished members of this regiment were honored by the uh, were honored were honored by being among the very first crop of plank or park rangers to be hired under the National uh, Park Service, no doubt as members of the 9th Cavalry Regiment living in that area had an established, uh, exp uh, they expired and they still stayed in that area. In fact, there are still many cemeteries up there bearing the name of the individuals who were in that cavalry. Sadron became one of the largest population of African-Americans during this time. Outside of Omaha, almost up until the 1940s, it was one of the largest areas of African-Americans. Serving as one, as one of the long-term homes of the 9th Cavalry is the reason enough that this is a sacred site for me. Now you add into the Native American history and Crazy Horse surrendered and died at this location. It was the site of the Fort Robinson breakout or massacre where 60 natives trying to escape for their freedom were hunted down in what the Supreme Court described as a shocking story. As a side note, this was not while the 9th Cavalry was stationed there. The Buffalo soldiers did not participate, but it was one of the worst uh, massacres in Native American histories in this area. In one of the last acts before the 19, before it closed in 1947, it was used for several years as prisoners, as to keep a, a war camp for prisoners in the, from Germany during World War II. Many people don't know about that. It played a significant role in our Western turmoil as it helped the local community and it, it made sure that we can keep our uh, nation active in the war. After World War II, the army ended its operation and the US Department of Agriculture took over. After some time, the USDA demolished several buildings, outraging many of the uh, people who wanted to preserve that area and the local activists. But by 1955, the History of Nebraska acquired its first building on the site, and it was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1966. And History Nebraska gradually increased its holding there until 1971. That's when the USDA officially transferred ownership to the state of Nebraska. We are fortunate that senators from many sessions ago solved this issue by bringing it into the state hands. But now the state must invest in these facilities to make sure they're preserved. The structures need to be preserved. The facilities are inadequate and it's time for us to make sure we do better. The Fort Robinson needs new lodging, updated RV park, 
and just modern amenities. A couple of years ago, I called Senator Brewer from uh, South Dakota. And I called him and said, what the hell are we doing in Nebraska? I'm up here and I see campers, RVs. I see thousands of people at a, at a hillside or a mountainside that isn't even completed yet touring it. We have the same history in Nebraska and we are missing out on that economic opportunities, in my opinion. Then we started having a conversation about why don't we have a museum of standing bear? One of our biggest and most notable civil rights activists in the world, let alone this country. I said, before we leave, we will put money aside for a museum. And that is the third part of this section of bill. I think it's important to not only honor his life, there is a connection to Omaha where the trial was, but for not to have something up where he was buried and where he is from, is just mind boggling to me. I believe people behind me are standing ready and willing to help build this museum and honor his life. This appropriation bill is somewhat vague and flexible because as you know, it's complicated to write a bill this year with bill drafting, um, and I'm not blaming bill drafting, but also how it should be distributed with Fort Robinson being owned by different people. So I'm willing to work with committee council to figure that out. I'm willing to work on the floor as this keeps moving to have amendments. But I do think this has to be done now this year while we have the, the ability to do so with our extra funds. I think by having Matching contributions at Fort Robinson and, and contributions at Standing Bear also make sure that the local people buy into it. I will probably be inducing an amendment on the floor, not in this committee, just to make sure I add some language to make sure it coordinates between Nebraska history and game and parks to fulfill this objective. Again, I'd like to thank this committee for their time and their patience for, for listening to this history, but I think it's important because this is one of the biggest acts that I think we can do to preserve the third history, its culture, and I think the American history that we as Nebraskans sometimes take for granted. And with that, I'll answer any questions. All right. Thank you, Senator Wayne. Uh, and so we got everybody thinking the same here. The Mayhew cabin is going to need some restoration. And then we need to establish some type of a facility there that tells the history of, of why it is significant. And so, again, going back to the reason why you don't want to box us in with too much detail in the bill, at this point, we just want to figure out a way to do all three tasks effectively. And we just need to figure out what that looks like and and because that was the one comment someone made to me was well there's not enough detail well the detail will come it's the concept and the right. need that we're trying to establish so. right so at the time of writing this bill we were still trying to figure out who actually owned mayhew cabin uh and then what we got from game and parks who visited with us and uh historic 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 nebraska is parts of fort robinson are owned by different parts and so um coordinating that plan uh, while doing two day committee hearings and all that just it wasn't going to get done in time. But I'm sure by select select uh, if this gets to the floor by select, we'll have that worked out with an amendment. Well, I did have a chance to talk with uh, Tim McCoy and he has offered to open Paul Robinson up for us to take a, uh, a senator trip out and and get a tour from front to back, uh, downrange, the, the whole place to better understand and see what's there and possibly where a footprint, if we expand where that could go. Uh, but your your point on the history of the fort, uh, the Cheyenne breakout, uh, they, they have a monument to that there. Um, all of these events that you described were exactly part of the history of Fort Robinson. The problem is no one's ever really sat down and taken, whether it be the POW part of it or the dog training part of it or the cavalry horse training and breeding part of it or or the, the Buffalo Soldiers or, or, or the Sioux War part of it and ever put it together into something where someone could walk through it and go, oh my gosh, look at all this wonderful history that unless you just happen to be a student of that particular area, you, you wouldn't ever know it was even there. Correct. Uh, 
And then Standing Bear kind of speaks for itself. I mean, if we made the decision to make it one of the two statues that represents the state in Washington, D.C., maybe we ought to have somewhere where you could come and know more about it. I mean, so I'm, I'm not native, but I felt disrespected being at Crazy Horse and seeing the story of Standing Bear being told there and I can't come to the state and see the same thing. I felt like we we're doing a disservice to our own our own citizens of Nebraska that we can travel to DC or travel to South Dakota to learn about one of our own. All right, thank you. Questions for Senator Wayne? Senator Lowe. Thanks, and uh, thank you, Senator Wayne, for bringing this. Uh, how many millions of dollars have you uh, put into bills this year that you'd like to have come out? <laughs> um, I put a lot in, but what I would like to come out uh, to answer more directly is uh, this is on my what I would say my official ask and priority list, and I'm looking for possibly uh, another hundred million for North and South Omaha economic recovery. But uh, we found a vehicle that this can go in, and I, I made this a priority for us. So the other priority probably is going to be the other bill that you guys kicked out, which is the the felon voting, which doesn't cost anything. But yeah. I do more for the third district than I do my own, so it's like, I, I appreciate your pride in, <laughs> in all the bills that you bring, and and uh, we struggle sometimes uh, collaborating on them. But uh, uh, the the Mayhew cabin, does it is it in a bad location? Will it suffer from flooding again if, if it stays there? Well, uh, well, it's next to a, a state park facility, uh, a cabin. I, I think that could be worked out. Um, I think it was just a once in a hundred five or once in a 500 year flood but i think it's because the plumbing and every from my understanding the plumbing and those things weren't updated which helped cause the flood so i think once we do all that and the estimate just to people understand uh, we think it's under a million dollars so the rest of this is truly going to fort robinson which is at 27 million and we estimated a museum to be around 50 and that's why we're requiring this match so we think we can get it all done thank you all right, additional questions. All right, thank you for that. Thank you. Room. And will you stick around for close or are you going yes, to send right back to close there and come back and close there? All right. And I may be coming your way. I'm supposed to be there at some point here. All right. We are now going to take proponents to LB 474. Proponents. Nobody? Any Anybody who wants to speak in the positive. All right. Welcome to the Government Committee. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Shauna Carpenter, S-H-A-N-N-A-C-A-R-P-E-N-T-E-R. -E -E um, and I am with the Ponca Turban, Nebraska's Tribal Council. I'm representative of our District 3, which is the Lincoln area. And I'm actually speaking on behalf of Richard Wright Jr. He's our Director of Culture Affairs, and he's in Norfolk in inclement weather and couldn't make it here today. So he's prepared something, and I'm going to read it for him. Good afternoon, Senator Tom Brewer and the Government, Military, and Veterans Affairs Committee. Aho, Ponca, Ijaje, Widike, Wajingapa, and Wahe, Ijaje, Widike. Richard Wright Jr. My Ponca name is Birdhead, and my English name is Richard Wright Jr., I currently serve as the Director of Cultural Affairs for the Ponca Tribe of Nebraska and am an enrolled member of the tribe and a lifelong Nebraskan from Norfolk. I am here today to support Legislative Bill 474. Firstly, it is important to note that Ponca Tribe history is Nebraska history, and we cannot grasp the complete picture of either unless we educate our citizens about both. Our past leader, Chief Standing Bear, has become more than just a prominent figure for the Ponca people but a revered leader and civil rights activist for our great state of Nebraska and the rest of our great nation. On May 12, 1879, a day that will forever be memorialized in Nebraska and United States history in Omaha, Nebraska, Judge Elmer Dundee declared the Native Americans were considered people under the federal law, and it is directly due to those brave actions of Standing Bear, as well as Nebraskans, that Native Americans across the country were finally beginning to be granted the rights and privileges that our great state and nation has to offer for all of their citizens. A Ponca and Standing Bear Cultural Center will allow us to better preserve our history for future generations of Poncas and Nebraskans. 
We currently have some of Standing Bear's personal belongings housed in our Ponca Museum in Niobrara. We are having active discussions on repatri repatriating more of the artifacts soon, and a Ponca and Standing Bear Cultural Center would allow us to provide a good home for those repatriated artifacts and ensure their preservation and safety for many years. Since our termination in 1965 and our restoration in 1990, the Ponca Tribe of Nebraska has grown exponentially, and I believe that at this point, we are more than capable of sharing our history and educating vis visitors on the legacy of Chief Standing Bear and the Ponca people. I believe that constructing a Ponca Cultural Center will be valuable in educating Nebraskans and tourists about the heritage and importance of Standing Bear in Nebraska's history. And I urge you to vote in favor of Legislation Bill 474. We Thank you, Government, Military, and Veterans Affairs Committee for allowing my voice to be heard, and I will do the best to answer any questions you may have. All right, thank you. Okay, questions. Well, I thought that uh, Senator Wayne did a very, very good job of, of explaining mm -hmm. that empty feeling to go up to the uh, memorial at uh, Crazy Horses, South Dakota monument and see the area they've dedicated to standing there and then to think about us being the home of Sandy Bear and not having something like that that you can recognize his accomplishments. So we got statue in DC, so we got to start, but we're not there yet. All right, thank you. All right, next proponent. <laughs> Come on up. Welcome to the government committee. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Brewer and members of the Government Military Veterans Affairs Committee. I am Brian Beckett. That's Brian, B-R-Y-A-N, Beckett, B-E-Q-U-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. I'm the mayor of Nebraska City, and I've been blessed to serve in that position since April of 2015. I want to thank the committee for the opportunity to be here today to voice my full support of LB-474, specifically the portion of the Nebraska State Historic Society purchasing, upgrading, and managing the Mayhew Cabin Historical Site. Nebraska City, as you're probably aware, is a very historic town. With Mayhew Cabin being one of them, we have 11 period homes or museums within the city. One of those is also owned by the city, the uh, Wildwood Period House. We have an active museum association. The city funds part of the museum association directors pay because we have one of those facilities, so we help with his stipend each year. We also use some of our economic development funds each year to help fund the museum association so they can pay docents at each of the museums and period homes to expand the hours that they're open so our residents can enjoy them and bring their guests in with them as well. We also have a history of working with the state and its departments on preserving historic sites and natural resources, specifically the Arbor Lodge and State Park. In 2013, 2014, when the department was looking for possible closures because of budget, the Friends of Arbor Day Lodge, which is mostly made up, uh, it's a nonprofit made up of mostly Nebraska City residents, worked with the state for a small time. The city became, in, uh, I forget the exact term, receivership or whatever. The state owned the park, but the city was going to take responsibility for it to keep it open. And then the Arbor Day Foundation came in and entered into a contract with the gaming parks to manage and uh, manage the park and to keep it updated. And they've done several refurbishments. I drove through there this morning because my wife wanted pictures of the big snowflakes amongst all the trees. So that is operating and going very well. But again, I thank you for the opportunity to come here. We want to have the Mayhew cabin refurbished, open for the public, that it can continue to tell that piece of history that Nebraska needs to tell. And uh, I look forward to working with the State Historic Society if this bill moves all the way through to become a reality. All right. Well, thank you for bringing that perspective from the city. Yes, All right, questions for the mayor. Yes, Senator Sanders. Maybe not a question, but um, official statement. Welcome, Brian, to the <coughs> legislature. Um, when I served as mayor, we were able to travel and work on a couple of committees together. Um, if the cabin gets refurbished, who then maintains it for the rest of its life? Is that city? Is that? I believe that would have to be worked out with the society as to what kind of management that would be worked out through that. At the state level. Thank you. All right. Any additional questions? All right. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you, Chairman. Well, 
Walk over the government committee. Fatia. Um, I'm Angie Starkle, the vice chair of the Ponca Tribe of Nebraska. I'm uh, today. I'm going to read a. Oh, sorry, it's yeah, Angela Starkle, A N G E L A S T A R K E L. My apologies. Today, I'm going to read a statement from Stacy Larvey, who is also Ponca, as well as our Tribal Historic Preservation Officer. Stacy is a third time, three times great granddaughter of Chief Standing Bear. Unfortunately, because of weather, she was not able to be here. Good afternoon, Senator Brewer and members of the Government, Military, and Veterans Affairs Committee. Ijaje Wawitete, Stacy Larvey. I am the Tribal Historic Preservation Officer for the Ponca Tribe of Nebraska, a Ponca member, a Nebraskan, and a three times great granddaughter of Chief Stanny Bear. In my position as a Tribal Historic Preservation Officer, my honor and sacred duty is to preserve and protect the Ponca ancestors, traditions, language, ceremonial objects, and sacred places. This honor is not only limited to these duties. I am as well the steward and caretaker of artifacts and heirlooms that belong to Ponca relatives. As honor, irony has it, some of these items belong to my grandfather, Stanley Bear. In my eyes, not only am I preserving and protecting a part of Ponca and Nebraska history, I am preserving my family's history as well. The story of my grandfather and the Ponca people goes beyond the history books in his trial. The story of Stanley Bear and the Ponca people's extraordinary ancestry needs to be shared. Everyone on this committee has an opportunity on sharing that story. The passing of LB 474 will aid in preserving and protecting our family's heritage and culture, such as Chief Standing Bear's tomahawk, and will tell the untold parts of Ponker history along with Chief Standing Bear's story. You all will be a part of that starting today and what you vote on for this, um, uh, when you will vote on this. The Standing Bear Museum will also educate and empower Ponca people in knowing whom and where they come from, healing trauma, and preserving our language and culture. The building itself is a means of preservation of what of most of what we have housed in archives, artifacts, audio, and oral histories, and needs to be protected in a controlled environment. The Standing Bear and Cultural uh, uh, Ponca Cultural Center will educate Nebraskans and the world about the greatness that can come from unity, resiliency, and the preservation of people. The story of the Ponca people is a true Nebraska history story. We have seen this time and time again, Nebraskans coming together to do what is right. I was taught to think seven generations ahead. LB 474 will do just that to support, preserve, and protect the Ponca history and the livelihood for the next seven generations. Thank you for allowing me to use my voice. We uh, the I wanted to add just an additional comment on behalf of myself and the Ponca tribe that have you, you've heard we um, previously mentioned that we have these artifacts that are over 100 years old from Standing Bear. These artifacts will help tell Standing Bear's story and they need to be protected in a, a controlled environment so that it can be shared with all Nebraskans. And this story of, of Standing Bear and the Ponca people is really about our civil rights. And this hits homes for all Nebraskans on protecting our rights. And that's the rights of having to be able to have, uh, make a livelihood, to take care of our family and be part of our communities. And by telling the story, it's gonna to help to remind Nebraskans of, of past history that we don't repeat again, that we protect all Nebraskans' um, rights and we can go forward with that. So it, it's imperative to tell this story. It's good to have it with the actual artifacts that can bring home that story and that it can be um, in the homelands of where Stanley Bear and Ponca people come from. And with that, I appreciate your time today uh, listening to our statements, and I'm open for any questions. All right. Thank you for that testimony. Uh, Senator Rabel. Thank you, Ms. Dargo, for coming here today. So do you and the Ponca tribe members have a location, or where would you envision the Standing Bear and Ponca tribe center to be located? Yes, we I, Definitely, I think it would, it's imperative to have it up into the Niobrara area. Um, that's where our homelands is. It's a beautiful area. It's, um, you know, we have a lot of um, hunting and fishing. There's a lot of people that come to uh, enjoy that area from around Nebraska and outside of Nebraska. There's, um, you'd be surprised at how many come to, people come to that area to enjoy the, the beauty and uh, the different um, attributes of hunting, fishing, and outdoors. So I think it's um, really makes it a, a good addition to the area. Thank you very much. And for those that don't know, we, we actually went through a series of unveilings of Standing Bear 
uh, of course, here on the mall in Lincoln. Then we had a ceremony on the traditional grounds. So there is a statue uh, identical to the one here on the mall that is already on traditional ground there. And then, of course, the third one was when we unveiled it in Washington, D.C. in the rotunda. So uh, now we just need to be able to tell his story so they can see the statue and understand everything that goes with it. All right. Additional questions. All right. Thank you for your testimony. Welcome to the Government Committee. Good afternoon, Chairman Brewer, members of the Government Military and Veterans Affairs Committee. My name is Kent Rogert, K-E-N-T-R-O-G-E-R-T, -E -E and I'm here as a registered lobbyist for the Ponca Tribe of Nebraska. I uh, just have a few things uh, to, that we would like to, in the, the wording of the coming amendment, we would assume, and uh, Mr. Chairman, you are correct in your original statement. The details will come, and I'd be happy to work with uh, Mr. Clark when we go to put those together. But one of the things we want to make sure we do is we we direct the funds uh, towards the Ponca tribe. Uh, the, the opening part of the bill goes to Nebraska's source, Historical Society. We think we'd rather have it some you know in a little more controlled environment for ourselves. Um, there's a may in there on page two, line seven. May use those funds. We would like to see the word shall. Um, and then uh, we we have a new name. Uh, it's not going to be probably the Standing Bear Museum, but rather the Standing Bear and Ponca Cultural Center. So there'll be lots of lots of different things going on in there. And they, they had some preliminary plans um, on on how to build that and what it would cost and, you know, anywhere from, uh, you know, upper 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 single digits to lower double digits in the millions for that type of museum. Happy to answer your questions you might have. All right. Well, uh, I'm glad you clarified that this this is kind of the broad stroke what we need it to look like yep and now we're starting to fill in and, and getting details so uh yes some patience on getting it perfect uh i think the concept is you know hopefully the committee looks at the concept the end state of what this should be and then as the bill travels through session we'll we'll figure out how to get the detail that we need there but we need all the players to to come in and share their wisdom on what right looks like so that we don't end up putting something in into the bill that hurts our ability to actually accomplish that correct goal okay questions for ken questions thank all you right. thank you Okay, next proponent to LP 474. Welcome to the government committee. Hi, thank you. My name is Susan Baker. I'm a um, travel secretary at the Bucket Tribe. We have a spell that. And I get a little nervous, so bear with me. Don't worry about it. So I'm here to testify on behalf of the bill um, LB 747. Okay. And you said to uh, Shana, we're not there yet. Uh, can we have you spell your name so we get it? Oh, I'm sorry. B A K E R. You said to Council um, Carpenter, we're not there yet. So my question is, when? When are we going to be there? We um, we we went to we went to Harvard to Peabody to, to get the study bears from the mock. So we were shown a room downstairs, full of Southern Ponca and Northern Ponca artifacts, including sunny bears, uh, beaded moccasins. So we are trying to build our event center and culture center and possible museum where we can bring it home. A lot of the museums throughout the United States are giving back Native American artifacts, including the hair of children that they took. So we need a help of our government, government to government, <coughs> to be able to do this. So you say, we're not there yet. Steady Bear is Nebraska. Nebraska is standing bear. I have to be a member that came back from California and joined my council. More members are coming from out of state back to Nebraska because we're Ponca. So if we're if if you guys are not standing bear and we're not Nebraska, 
then when do we merge in partnership so we can be there? That's my question. So I support this bill because I think it's important for Nebraska as well as it is for our tribe, the Baca. It's a full history. This is civil rights. This is a civil rights case. It's civil rights for Nebraska. It's civil rights for our tribe and other indigenous people. So when do we bridge that gap? I mean, the gap was bridged when he went to the trial and was released. And he offered his tomahawk in payment. He had no money. So we get it back. So when do we partner back up and fill in the gap of the civil rights? Okay. And uh, this may be my fault that I didn't explain that better. When I said we're not there, what I mean is we are going to make a law. And if we do it wrong, we will do the project. So, so don't think that it's not because I don't think it shouldn't be done. I think we have to carefully write the law and and secure the, the funds so that this opportunity we have to do it, we, we do it as close to perfect as we can. So I'm sorry if I, I misstated that. Uh, it's not an issue of whether we think it should be done or needs to be done. It's how do we do it so that we we do it right, and that's I think the true concern we have is. is I that understand we, that. I'm sorry, it just we missed out last year when we came before for the bill, and we just we, we need this to be done to where we can just play. It's history. It's tourism. It brings a lot, and people need to know who we are and what this case was all about, including Nebraska. Well, uh, I think if you were to ask folks within the body. Uh, if you wanted a champion for a cause, there's no better champion than uh, Senator Wayne. And I'm there with him. And there may be better champions than the two of us, but you have two very good ones. So trust me, we are, we are going to do everything humanly possible to figure out what this should look like so we can get it done. Thank you. All right. Questions? All right. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. All we right. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm being given a warning order that I'm going to judiciary quickly here. So don't don't be upset if I leave. Senator Sanders will take off and do a great job. OK, and that was my second warning. OK, uh, Judy, welcome to the government. Oh, thank you. Since you said you were leaving, I, I apologize, but I decided I've got to get up here. So I have Senator Brewer. Uh, chair and committee, thank you so much. I am Judy Gosh-Kabash, the Executive Director of the Nebraska Commission on Indian Affairs. My name is spelled J-U-D-I-G-A-I-A-S-H-K-I-B-O-S, and I'm testifying in the capacity as the Director of the Commission on Indian Affairs. I have been the Director for 27 years. This is the beginning of my 28th year, and I am a proud member of the Ponca Tribe of Nebraska, and never in my life did I believe that we would be sitting here today contemplating this legislation. So I want to thank the leadership, uh, Senator Wayne, and I agree with you. The two of you are amazing and what you can do together. So uh, oftentimes it's just the timing of life that things come together and that we have the leadership and the diversity that we do that wants to celebrate all of Nebraska's history. And as um, you said, Senator Brewer, uh, Standing Bear is up at Niagara, and that was partly due to your leadership uh, in LB 807 when Standing Bear went to Washington, D.C., after he was uh, dedicated over here in 2017. So since he's there, I think we need to have a cultural center there. Uh, the devils are in the details, as they say. I'm a little concerned about a lot of this language, but I understand I'm open to, as everyone said, working with you to get where we need to go so that this is a priority bill that may include the MMIP priority that status. I want both of those to be there on behalf of all of the tribes in Nebraska and the Indian Commission. We are committed to helping um, save lives and to give a voice to the voiceless and to protect our missing and murdered indigenous people. And until the trial of Standing Bear, we weren't considered humans. And yet today we're still not treated with the dignity that we always 
um, deserve or should have. So um, trying to think, uh, there was something in the fiscal note that maybe the History Museum is going to talk about, but you do know there's a museum down in Oklahoma, the Standing Bear Museum. It is not the intent of this bill to give any of that money to the Oklahoma uh, Standing Bear Museum. And as I, the Ponca tribe has testified, this would be located on trust lands up in Niobrara. And I believe as the bill reads now, the funds would have gone to History Nebraska, and I'm sure they're going to testify about whether they wanna oversee Mayhew and all that and uh, understanding they have divested themselves of properties and I'm not sure that they wanna take on more, but I think uh, last year your bill for the museum, the Poncas didn't get any last year, the money went to the movie. And I think that movie is going to be uh, so amazing when it happens that will really put this story front and center. And I think that it would be important to use that same mechanism for funding to have it go to the Department of Economic Development rather than History Nebraska. And then they directly work with the Ponca tribe. So that, that's what I think would be preferable because I understand it is state funding and you are in charge of that money. So um, however this plays out, I think this is going to be um, a first in our history and it's time to tell this story. So thank you all. I hope this moves to the floor and I, uh, if I'm assured that our MMIP is going to be a part of the priority, I'm gonna trust all of you and be flexible and be willing to work with the tribe, with you, with the Mayhew people, with Fort Robinson, because all of those stories are threaded together to be a part of our people's history. And we have been left out for far too long and I know you all want the children in our state to not have to go to South Dakota and other places to learn our history when they could come here and go to the Ponca uh, Cultural Center. So with that, I would uh, say thank you again. And uh, Senator Hellerman, it's nice to see you. And uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. We'd love it. All right, Judy, so uh, if those aren't those that might not be familiar with the, the movie, can you just give a quick synopsis of, of the Standing Bear movie that uh, is in development? Okay, yes, there's a few new things that um, I'll, I guess I can say these things. Uh, I feel a little bit like, I hope I'm not violating anybody's confidentiality. Well, you but can just give us a warm As word. you know, you funded $5 million for uh, the Standing Bear movie, and that was working with Andrew Troy, and that money has been funded, and so they have a script and they're working on that. Uh, recently, another film company came to Nebraska, and uh, that was Jim Sheridan and Bart Daly from Ireland, from Dublin. And Jim Sheridan uh, is the director of My Left Foot with Daniel Day-Lewis and other amazing movies. So he met with the Ponca, uh, they met with the Ponca Council, they met with me and the governor. Today they're in California meeting with Andrew Troy. They're in discussion to try to merge the two movies into one movie that will with Jim Sheridan's body of work. He's won, been nominated for many Academy Awards. He's an elder uh, respected uh, director. So it could work out that there'll be one movie that is not, a, I have no control over that, but I do think that that will really be something that will bring a lot of attention to this story to Nebraska. And so that's that's the best I can tell you. Uh, Jim Sheridan is planning his calendar with or without Andrew Troy. He will do a movie uh, and it will start in the um, next summer of 24. He has another movie he's working on prior to that. So that's pretty cool, yeah. don't y'all think? And uh, on the issue of Fort Robinson. We really have a number of stories to tell there. One is the Cheyenne breakout, which Senator Wayne described just briefly. And then of course, the, the history of the Sioux Wars and, and how the fort was used there. Uh, that's kind of why when the idea started to come about between Senator Wayne and I, it just seemed like there was a good chance that the Mayu cabin could be forgotten and lost to history. And nobody was scheduled to really do anything to help develop Standing Bear and, and tell the story and have a place where you could go to, to see and hear and, and, and just have the history of, of what Standing Bear had done. 
in a place. And then we got to looking at what we're trying to do at Fort Rob, and it, it, it was the idea of, of capturing all this history is what brought us to where this bill is the way it is. And so a lot of, a lot of folks, well, they ought to be three different bills. But I think what we're trying to tell in, in what all of these will end up having as, a, as an end product really flow together. And the piece of history we're trying to cover is all together. And it's all Nebraska history. And it's all about civil rights. So do you kind of see why it was all bunched together? I mean, if you're Maybe on the outside looking in, you think, "No, nah, it's crazy." They, they all could be, but if we if we dice them apart and and any one of those didn't get a priority, didn't get any love, it, it would probably fade away and not be a part of what we were hoping to be able to accomplish. I agree. Strength in numbers, and um, the more the better. I, I totally think that's a great idea. And you know, with the creation of the Black Commission like our agency, maybe that uh, their leadership can lend some support to the Mayhew working with the um, History Nebraska. Uh, over the last 20, well, starting in 2006, we started celebrating the Standing Bear Breakfasts where we had 600 people and, and on and on and on. And in this coming May, there will be a U.S. stamp for Standing Bear. So that's coming out May 12th. And the Standing Bear footprint is growing it just keeps growing and the more people know the story so uh, nebraska every time you see news uh, feed on what's happening in dc the position of where standing bear is in the u.s statuary hall you see our chief there and that always makes me feel so proud so so i hope that uh, we find a way to get this um, everybody else if they're all as supportive as you are then I feel confident that 35 million, is that the number we're talking? Well, it's, it's a number that we're working with. And again, what we need to do is, is be sure that that's a, a number that can do what needs to be done, that, that, that we have the right support from the right folks. If we need a little more that, you know, we have options to do that. So that's a number we're working with, but we shouldn't be actually, you know, fixed on that because uh, we, we need to figure out how to do it right. And we're not absolutely sure what right looks like when it comes to the money piece of it either. So sure. What it, the Standing Bear Cultural Center would play into your Star Wars up at the Niobrara State Park. So I think there's a could be a win-win. There's lots of reasons why uh, the Ponca Tribe is an important partner. And I hope that they aren't given the least amount of money. I hope that they're given a good amount that they can find matching funds to and have it on their trust lens so that they uh, control the uh, narrative. We it's, like to use Star Wars money, so sure. we're going to we're gonna figure it out. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions for Judy? Yes, Senator Lowe. Thank you, uh, and thank you, Judy. Um, every year the senators get stamps for the interim session while we're not here. Could you make sure that those are standing bear stamps? Sure. I think I can do that. Maybe the, maybe right. the clerk that does that, but okay. <laughs> well, you put arm wrestling to do that. All right. All right. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Judy. Okay. Next proponent. <clears throat> And I'm probably going to be leaving during your testimony, so please don't don't take it personal here. I just got to be somewhere else. Welcome that, to the government. Committee. That's just fine. Good afternoon, Senator Brewer, uh, members of the Government, Military, and Veterans Affair Committee. My name is Drew Graham, B-R-E-W-G-R-A-H-A-M, and I am legal counsel for the city of Nebraska City. And I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to come and testify uh, very briefly in support of LB 474 on behalf of the city. Um, really, I guess I'm just here to offer a little bit of uh, context to a few of the things that I've heard uh, thus far, um, specifically related to Mayhew Cabin and the Mayhew Cabin site um, as it relates to this bill. Uh, first and foremost, the, the site itself where the cabin is located and then an adjacent parcel where the, I'm gonna call it the museum structure is located are both owned by a private uh, nonprofit foundation. Um, so that foundation has a board, they have owned and operated those uh, sites for a number of years. Um, as has been uh, mentioned uh, by Senator Wayne in 2000, May, 2019, there was a uh, substantial flooding event that occurred that did result in the flooding of uh, the both the museum structure and the 
the ravine that sits immediately adjacent to the Mayhew cabin. Um, the cause of that flooding was a uh, black drainage tube at the end of the ravine. Um, and I guess the best way I can state it is the ownership of that drainage tube is a point of contention between the uh, foundation that owns the site and between the city. Um, the city has no record of ownership of that drainage tube. The foundation is adamant that it was and is owned and to be maintained by the city, um, which led to a claim being presented to the city. Um, given the allegations and the amount of the claim that was made at that time, a decision was made by the city to deny the claim and let the matter resolve itself uh, legally in the courts. Um, the initial claim that was presented to the city was for just over $3.9 million. So that would be for the reconstruction and replacement of the building, all the infrastructure, everything, and included a $3 million punitive damages uh, ask from the cabin or from the foundation of the city. So again, my advice at that time, I was representing the city. My advice was um, to just deny the claim and let it resolve in the courts. Um, unfortunately, for clarity's sake, the resolution never came. Uh, the, the final lawsuit that was filed by the Mayhew Cabin Foundation against the city uh, was ultimately dismissed for lack of prosecution. Um, they had an attorney that was working pro bono who had to withdraw for personal reasons. They were not able to secure additional counsel, um, so the case was dismissed. Um, so for the four years interim, uh, the city did, uh, I guess, weather uh, all of the the public statements and uh, disparagement that came along with, you know, denial of this claim and, and defending of that lawsuit. Um, the city shares in the disappointment over the closure of the cabin, uh, both as a historical site and a tourist attraction for the city. Um, I'll reiterate, as Mayor Beckett said, um, the city is one of the oldest in the state of Nebraska, and there is a a great deal of history and extremely old history for the state of Nebraska, including the cabin and the site there. Um, that said, again, given the litigious nature of the foundation and the manner that it was handled publicly, um, the council has, I guess, had no interaction with the foundation as it currently exists towards, um, I know that it's been mentioned, you know, who who's going to purchase it or who's going to maintain it or who's going to manage it. And those discussions have not had as there is, I would say, currently no relationship between the foundation and the city. Um, the site is incredibly important from a historical historical standpoint, and it would be the hope of the city that the state could uh, take ownership and secure the funds to reopen it for future generations. So with that, um, I would open up for any questions that you have. Are there any questions? Senator Lowe. Is the foundation, uh, are the members from Nebraska? So I believe that there are members of their board that are from Nebraska, but as far as all of them, I do not know. Okay. So just there are several members um, of their board that are from Nebraska, yes. All right. Thank you. Are there any others? Senator Rainbow. Did Thank you for your testimony, Mr. Graham. Do you envision the possibility and opportunity for Nebraska City to work with the foundation and work with either the Nebraska Historic Society or whoever is the recipient of the funds to do the restoration of the cabin? Because it seems like it would have to be something very collaborative for sure, for sure. I obviously cannot out. speak to, yeah. you know, the council and, and their desires as a, a independent body. Um, I do know that the city, as the mayor indicated, currently works with several um, other museums, agencies, the state in, in different regards to do that. Um, I think the, the current uh, tension that we're seeing or have been seeing over the last number of years had to do with the... Uh, the foundation board as it exists. So the members and the tension that the city was feeling from them. So there was never necessarily an approach for a collaborative sol solution or um, a way to address it. As I said, you know, the first ask that we got was 
3.9 million. Um, 3 million of that was quote unquote punitive damages for um, whatever that's worth. So I think that, you know, given that the, the city has kind of taken more of a defensive and, and hands off standpoint from a legal. Mm -hmm. And um, again, given the case then progressed for three years following the flooding event. So up until just under a year ago, there was still ongoing litigation. So again, um, under my advice, there really hasn't been any uh, reach out uh, to that end just due to the litigation. Okay, thank you. Thank you, any other questions? See none, thank you for your testimony. Thank you for your time. Are there any other proponents? Any opponents? Any in the neutral? <laughs> Welcome. Oh, thank you. I'm dropping things. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to thank the uh, members of the Government, Military, and Veterans Affairs Committee for letting us come speak about this. My name is Jill Dahlberg, J-I-L-L-D-O-L-B-E-R-G, and I'm the Interim Director of History Nebraska, the state's historical society. I want to thank Senators Wayne, Brewer, and Hardin for introducing this bill and the emphasis that it places on uh, Nebraska history. We don't often see bills that are so enthusiastic about history, and so we get tickled by that. Um, and we're grateful for the trust that this bill shows in History Nebraska and our care of historic sites. I'm here testifying in a neutral capacity, but only because I have so many questions about the ramifications uh, of the bill should it be passed. But first, I'd rather tell you what I'm not neutral about. Uh, my agency and I are passionate about historic properties. Uh, we own, maintain, and operate Chimney Rock, Neely Mill, the George Norris House. Uh, we own uh, and maintain but don't operate the Nyhart Center in Bancroft. And as you know, we already own, maintain, and interpret uh, about a dozen buildings at Fort Robinson. It's long been our goal to uh, to undertake a project that would update the interpretation of Fort Robinson, it is uh, old and tired, admittedly, and it doesn't tell the full story of the site. Senator Brewer was right. There's layers of history at Fort Robinson, and mostly they're told well in books, but we could do a much better job of coordinating with Game and Parks and with uh, the university to tell all of the stories. So if I was allowed to dream a little bit, I would love to coordinate all of the work with them to coordinate all of the historical interpretation about Fort Robinson. So if that's part of what this uh, bill is about, we're very enthusiastic. But it also mentions to an intent to upgrade and maintain Fort Robinson, which covers a lot of ground, like literally 2,500 acres. So, um, and a bunch of that is owned by and operated by Game and Parks. So we'd be really excited to learn more about what the intentions are for uh, the improvements that would be made there. So just part of that dialogue wouldn't be part of the conversation. As for the Mayhew cabin, I'm very familiar with the cabin and its historical significance. The cabin, sometimes referred to as John Brown's Cave, was listed in the National Register of Historic Places in 2010. It has two periods of significance. So the first is from 1855 to 1859, when the cabin was used as a stop on the Underground Railroad. And then the second is from 1937 to 1959, when the cabin was moved and it became something of a tourist attraction. Although there were other stops along the, the Underground Railroad, no others in Nebraska are known to remain extant. The sites may exist, but the buildings do not. So I, I know about the uh, flood damage that happened in 2013. I think, I think we said 2013. I didn't realize it was that long ago. Um, but specifically, I'm not sure how extensive the damage is. I've learned a lot from this hearing that there's mildew problems and, and uh, definitely some collapse of the the cave tunnel system that ran underneath. So I presume that's part of what the, well, actually, I presume that a lot more of the uh, funding from this bill would go towards that than, than is apparently um, earmarked for it. There are a few points that could use some clarification about the intent of the bill regarding the Mayhew cabin. Um, is it the intent of the bill that we would purchase the cabin outright, or do we need to follow a regular process for acquiring the property um, that is in state law? Um, is it the intent for us to acquire the cabin alone or to include the associated buildings on the site? 
uh, which includes a modern administration building as well. And as he said, those are were damaged as well by the flood. Um, this might impact the scope of the updates that are required. And finally, is it the intent that we would own the cabin and contract with the existing Mayhew Cabin Foundation to operate the site as we do the Nyhart Center? Or is his funeral basket intended to operate it? So clearly we've got more conversations. <laughs> the bill also mentions uh, funds for the Standing Bear Museum. I had not heard plans for a Standing Bear Museum I, or a cultural center. I want to uh, correct myself. Um, but I am certain that it is worthy of having a museum and uh, would be more than happy to work in whatever capacity is needed to help that be accomplished. So you will notice that we submitted a fiscal note that did not outline a fiscal impact to our agency. We found it a little difficult to figure out what the impact might be because there were so many unknowns involved. We also, by the way, I was pretty sure we weren't planning to send money to Oklahoma City. <laughs> that ended up in there for my our accounting team. Sorry about that. Um, we are more than happy to meet with anyone that seems appropriate to make plans and talk through ideas. We're grateful to you, Senators Wayne, Brewer, and Hardin for recommending a bill that has so much potential to emphasize the importance of Nebraska's history and help us to interpret more of it for our citizens. There are so many cultural perspectives that can be shared from this variety of historic properties, and we're eager to talk more about it. So thank you for your consideration, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that I can. Thank you very much for your testimony. And I think um, Senator Brewer mentioned this was the broad stroke right. and then the devils in the details, which hopefully you'll be part of. Yes. I'm excited to hear more and more as this involves. Me too. Yeah. Let me check to see if there are any questions. I see none. Thank very you good. for your testimony. Thank you. Are there any others in the neutral? See none. Is Senator Wayne here to close? Oh, and I do need to read, um, for the record, letters um, for proponent. We had five, opponent, zero, and one in the neutral. Thank you, uh, Chair Sanders uh, and the government committee. Um, I'm glad we had this hearing. Uh, I have wrote for Senator Lowe's, uh, Senator Holler, some very, very long and complicated bills uh, down here. Some dealing with money, some dealing without. This was by far the hardest bill for me to write uh, because my office reached out to the nonprofit multiple times and haven't did not get any uh, feedback. Uh, so figuring out who owned Mayhew was one thing. And, and I'll be very blunt. The reason we put these packages together was about how to get votes. Um, looking uh, at the time, I didn't know Senator Decay and now he's on my committee. So I thought a new senator who probably wants something in his district. Uh, so I believe we should put something up there with the with the Ponca tribe. Uh, Brewer was very instrumental on the Fort Robinson, and we actually got an estimated uh, cost after the bill was introduced, uh, and then working with Senator Slama. So it was about if I could bring them three together uh, and this, this little guy from Omaha, we might be able to pull this off this year. So as far as the details, we've already started outlining a, a, an amendment in the back when we were sitting there listening to all of this. Uh, we started out with 75 million uh, legal counsel, then we went to 50 million, and then we started put a bill in for uh, 35 million. Uh, and my goal is to get this to the floor. Uh, one, if I don't prioritize it, I think we have a vehicle to do so. Well, I know we have a vehicle to do so. But two, uh, I would ask this committee to trust me in this regard. Uh, we voted out 1024 on the floor with the $450 million package. The first amendment on that bill lowered it to $100 million, and then since then we went up. So whatever is on the floor, I have no problem working with. And if it's only $5 million this year, then it's only $5 million. I just ask that the bill get to the floor so we can work on it. Uh, I'm not a fan of interim hearings, uh, interim studies. It isn't until you get a bill introduced that actually people come down and talk about it. And so we got a lot of information. Uh, I do want to work with Nebraska to city to talk about some of these issues on infrastructure and see if there's any funds available that they could help out with. Um, these are all conversations that can that really don't take longer than a week to have. I know I can get that done, uh, but I would ask the committee to vote it out as is. And, and I'll work with legal counsel and amendments on the floor uh, to figure out the price and where it's at. Part of the reason the price is confusing or the price tag is confusing this year is I really don't know how much money we have on the floor. Uh, this is kind of the first year. We've heard everything from 300 million to a billion. Um, so 
I don't want to start negotiating against myself before we even get to the floor. Um, but we will. Uh, you have my word. If it's only $5 million, I have no problem doing that. If it's only $1 million, the point is, is that we as a state have to start preserving some of this culture and history before we lose it. And these particular sites, these three, are, I mean, you can't get more um, historic, not just in time and length, but in the amount of change these three were these three represent in our culture in our Nebraska culture and so I think it's historic not just from a history perspective but for what it meant for Nebraska and I think we should make sure we preserve that and with that I'll answer any questions thank you Senator Wayne let me check if there are any questions Sina thank, thank you. you thank, thank you. you very thank much you this closes the hearing on LB 474